What's going on everyone? It's Jacqueline here from Nothing But Tech. I hope you guys are all doing well. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we're talking about the Microsoft Surface Pro 7 and the Microsoft Surface Pro X. This Microsoft event was absolutely packed with so many products, so let me know if there's another product that they announced that you want me to feature in another video, like their new headphones or uh, the new Surface laptop. Let me know with a comment below, but in this video, I'm gonna compare both the Surface Pro 7 and the Surface Pro X and also tell you some things that you're gonna to wanna to know before buying one. All right, so let's dive right in. So Microsoft has kind of gotten this like two in one form factor down to a science, which means that the Surface Pro 7 does not have that many changes on the exterior. A lot of what you're gonna find that's different is on the interior, whereas the Surface Pro X is like this new product, so there's a lot of things that are different with it. So I spent most of my time in the hands-on looking at that, and it's really exciting. Microsoft partnered with Qualcomm on the CPU, so they've created this really powerful CPU that enables a lot of interesting things on the Surface Pro X. But just in terms of power it's packing, they say that it's three times more powerful per watt when compared to the Surface Pro 6. But let's start where it all starts. The first thing that you're gonna wanna know, the design. So the Surface Pro X has a larger display at 13 inches versus a 12.3 inch display found on the 7, but they both have the same PPI at 267 and the same 3 by 2 aspect ratio. In terms of weight, they are pretty similar, but the Surface Pro X is a little bit lighter at 1.68 pounds compared to the 1.7 pounds found on the Surface Pro. And it's also thinner, which you can definitely tell. This is an extremely thin device, especially then when you look at the Surface Pro 7. The Surface Pro X just feels like a much more portable device. The the Surface Pro X also packs this new innovative design in the keyboard, so you have this hidden slot for the new redesigned slim pen, and the pen is not only thinner, but it's also a little bit wider in terms of width, but it's really comfortable to write with, and the second you take it out of its hidden slot, it's ready to use, and then when you put it back in, it starts wirelessly charging. This might feel like a really small thing, but it actually will make a huge impact on your daily use with the device. It's pretty convenient. And Microsoft actually said when they were presenting it, sometimes the smallest things have the biggest impact. I tend to agree. To go alongside that innovative pen design, the X also has an innovative design for the solid state drive, meaning that underneath the kickstand, there is a place where the user can access the solid state drive. That's really cool. The Pro X also features an SQ1 processor, uh, which is the new processor that Qualcomm worked on with Microsoft. And that will give you the benefits of like a mobile phone in a computer. So that means that you're gonna get really good battery life. Microsoft is promising 13 hours and it also is supporting fast charging, which means that you can get all the way back up to 80%, 80% and underneath an hour. That's nuts. The Surface Pro 7, however, sticks to Intel, so they use the Intel's 10th gen Ice Lake CPUs with options for a Core i3, i5, and i7 processors with up to 16 gigabytes of RAM and a one terabyte SSD. So it's hard to say right now, but it seems like the spec'd up model of the Surface Pro 7 is definitely gonna be more powerful than the Surface Pro X. Only testing will actually tell that for sure though, but just based on pure numbers, that's kind of how it feels. There's also built-in LTE connectivity on the Surface Pro X, meaning that you can really use the Surface Pro X as like your on-the-go mobile computer. That's also great to see. In terms of connectivity and ports, they finally added a USB Type-C port to the Surface Pro 7. That's amazing, I'm so glad that they finally, finally did that. Uh, and then you're getting two USB Type-C ports on the Surface Pro X. But before you buy it, you're gonna wanna know the price. And the Surface Pro 7 starts out at $749 for just the tablet, obviously no keyboard included. Uh, but then higher end configurations will probably go up to around like $2,000. And then you're gonna wanna factor in the cost of the type cover and the Surface Pen. Now for the Surface Pro X, it's gonna start out at $999 and that's also without the type cover or the new slim pen, so those are gonna be added expenses as well. At the end of the day, when you spec these up the way you're probably gonna to wanna to use them, they're gonna become pretty premium priced devices. To generalize the differences between the Surface Pro 7 and the Surface Pro X, I would say that the Surface Pro 7 feels like the more powerful device. Like if you need to get a lot of stuff done, that might be the call because it has Intel's chips. Only time will tell when we actually compare the two. But however, even if that does stay true, the Surface Pro X feels a lot more innovative to me and it also feels like the much more portable device because it not only has that thinner chassis, but it also has that LTE connectivity. That's it for this video though. I would love to hear what you think in a comment down below. Subscribe right here so you don't miss any other content. It's Techtober, so there's gonna be hopefully a lot of it. Check out another video right here and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Bye.